Hey guys, welcome back to the This Is All Skate Shop YouTube channel. Today we're going to do a review of the Roaches Dogma Skate. I'm going to run through the history of Roaches, run through the history of the Dogma Skate, tell you something about all the little parts on the skate and tell you my honest opinion about it. During the vlogs I'll probably throw in some terms uh, that are maybe hard to understand if you're a beginner skater and haven't heard all these weird words yet. We have a YouTube video probably about each and every one of those words on our YouTube channel, so subscribe to the channel and keep updated, but also look at the older videos to be well informed and also understand what the hell I'm talking about sometimes. Well, Roaches is one of the oldest inline skating brands in the, the world of inline skating. Uh, they started out making ice skates and that ice skate later became uh, the, the mold for the first rollerblade brand skates. So Roaches actually made the rollerblade skates in the 80s and then in the, the 90s rollerblade was bought by a, 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 comp a different company so they had to change their structures and they took production away from Roaches and Roaches started making their own skates in 1992. Um, this mold that they used for those rollerblade skates and those ice skates earlier in the 70s that was the same mold that they now use for the Roaches M12 um, this is a very classic skate. There's a lot of history here. Um, and in a way, all skates are kind of like uh, designed to look like this one. If you really think about it, the way the cuff works and the way the internal flex structures are, you can see the same uh, design in uh, almost all modern skates because of this one. This is grandpa skate. So this iconic skate was very popular in the 90s, but then popularity fell uh, in the in the when the, the millennium turned and so Roaches kind of like had a problem um, w at least within aggressive skating their their sales went down a little bit and they started a collaboration with John Julio and they started Valo in 2003. Valo is just a sub brand of Roaches and the skates they were making were very very similar to the current uh, Roaches Dogma skates. Um, it just had a, a Valo logo here and uh, of course different designs with the skins. Uh, there were many, many different editions. Uh, Valo existed for 15 years until 2019 uh, when uh, John and uh, Roaches separated ways and uh, Roaches discontinued the, the Valo brand because of that. And um, not, not too soon later, they uh, re-released uh, their classic M12 skate under the Roaches brand again and um, also a little bit later, in 2022, the Dogma Skate was re-released. These are all the current Dogma Skates on the market right now. There's only two, and they are both the Bobby Spassov Pro Skates. Um, with a lot of these reviews, uh, the skates are already a little bit older, and we have a little bit more of a clear line of what the brand wants to do with this model. Um, but for the Dogma Skate, I'm really not sure what the future holds. So it could be that Roaches is gonna like build up on this model and start doing a, like a, a different versions, maybe like a, a team version, which would then like not be a pro version, so it would be a little bit cheaper and not designed by Bobby Spasov. Uh, or maybe they're gonna do a carbon version like they also did with Valo, but uh, they also could just discontinue it and this, these would be the only two ones. Um, so, in my opinion, the future is re really unclear. Uh, all I know is that there's two pro skates out right now. Lucky enough, I do know all the specifics about this skate because I also used to skate it a couple years ago under the Valo brand. Um, and uh, I know every little detail about it and I'm going to tell you about it right now. First thing is the fit. Um, underneath this skate, this is a really important thing to know, if you take off the skin, is just the normal Roaches skate. So that's why I started with the history as well. So the fit of the Dogma skate is exactly the same as the Roaches M12. And the Roaches M12 is a little bit small and a little bit narrow. Okay, so you should probably get one size or maybe even two sizes up if you order the skate online. Right. Best thing to do, however, is to come to our store in Amsterdam. We are here, of course, not in a studio. We're here in the skate shop in the Netherlands. So if you're in the neighborhood, I mean, if you're in Germany or France, or if you're anywhere in Northwestern Europe, come to our shop, try on these skates, because then you really know if they'll fit 
And you can also, of course, try all the other models and brands because we have everything right here. So the sizing works in dual sizing and um, the sizing is advertised as single sizing. So that's a little bit confusing. So let me tell you how that works. Um, you have these outer molds and there are um, no molds for each size. So let's say the 41 and the 42, they both use the same outer mold. And if you have a 41, it just means that the, the liner is a little bit smaller, but after you skate it for a, for a while, it will become warm, it will become wet, it will move a lot, and the, the 41 will shape into a 42 after all. So be really cautious about what you buy. If you buy a 41, you actually buy a 42, okay? Um, that's why, because of this, we on our website bundle these two sizes to be more clear, and we, if you buy a 41, 42, on our website, you get the 42 because there's no reason to have this, um, this, this gap in the front. Everybody likes a little bit more room in the toe. Uh, in, in the end, it's about the pressure that's, that's here in, in your foot. Uh, that's where the control comes from. If you so let's say, uh, because this skate also fits small, let's say you have a 41. I think the 41, 42 would be good for you. But if you would have a normal shoe size 42, I think the 43, 44 would probably be best for you. Get it? It's a little bit difficult. The sizing is just difficult. So again, the best thing to do is to come by our store. Um, there's another road to skate, which is the fifth element. And there's a, a funny thing how that went because the Valo skinned models have this sole plate, okay? And also now the Dogma skate has this sole plate. So this sole plate was designed for an M12 with the skin. But then a couple of years ago, Road just re-released the fifth element. And the fifth element used this sole plate as the base and they made a shell to fit in that sole plate. So this sole plate also is exactly 100% the same as the, the fifth element sole plate. It's interchangeable. Um, it's just the same product. But the fifth element is a little bit wider. Okay, so if you have a wide feet and you want to skate the road to skate, go for the fifth element and not for the M12. There are, of course, a lot of other skates on the market in our shop here in Amsterdam. On thisisold.com, you can see everything that are a lot wider, like uh, Razors SL, Razors Genesis, Seba CJ. So just a, a smart thing to uh, keep in mind if you have wide feet. One fun thing that you can do to adjust the size a little bit in the skate is because there's a skin over it, you can cut a little bit in this shell. So let's say you have a little bit of a, a, a bulge here on your foot, like a six toe type of thing. You can just cut out a little bit of the shell and then put the skin back over it and nobody will see it. One other thing that a lot of people have done already in the past is make a toe cut. And with the toe cut, you just take a saw. It can be uh, a, a metal saw or a wooden saw. I, I, I don't mean a wooden saw, but I mean a saw to saw wood, okay? In, important distinction. Um, and just cut off the, the entire toe. I would leave the, 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 the bottom there. Of course, you take off the, the sole plate first, so you only do it from the shell. And then um, uh, you have a lot more room in the front, so it, it adds like a couple millimeters in front. Um, if you just Google, I think, Valo toe cuts, you'll find a lot of like photos and videos about it. Okay, so that was everything about the fit. Now let's move on to the way this skate is built. Uh, I have one. Uh, example model here, which I already took the sole plate bolts out. So there's uh, eight bolts here. If you just unscrew them in the bottom, you can just take this part off. And here you can see that the, the back is higher than the front. You can also see it, if you look at the sole plate, that there's a little bit of a plastic, um, yeah, it's kind of like an insert here. Um, it's incorporated in the sole plate, so the front is actually lower than the back. Uh, this is a, like a, a classical way of making aggressive skates or making skates in general. Modern aggressive skates have a flat boot and then a an, uh, shock absorber in there. I'm not entirely sure if the shock absorber is the best solution. Like if you're gonna jump from three meters to the ground, a shock absorber is for sure nice. But if you're just skating and grinding a little bit and maybe jumping normal heights and not like three meter heights, you really don't need a shock absorber and the shock absorber also takes away a lot of the energy if you're just skating or just also when you're grinding, it takes away control. So 
some people see it as a downside that there's no shock absorber. Um, I'm not so sure about it. I actually like it as well if there's more direct contact. Now I'm gonna run through all the little aspects of this skate, all the little parts, and tell you everything about that. Uh, next topic is the skin. And let me show you how to take off the skin, because you can very easily take out the liner like this. So you just take this out. Whoop. Okay. And then you already see this M12 skin here, but it's locked behind the, the buckles. Um, the buckle has uh, uh, the strap here, and you can just push it out. Look at this. Boom. You see this? It has like uh, these um, hooks here on both sides, and there's a, a hole. So I can just take this out here. And there's a square hole, and these hooks, they just like hook behind it here, and that's how it's hold. So if you just push it out, the hooks will release, and uh, you can take this one out on, on this side. And on the other side, there's just these two screws. If you just unscrew this, you can take out the buckle. Boom. All right. So now the buckles are off, and you can then take this flap here. Boom. Do it like this. And on the other side, release the flap from the cuff on this side. And that's the last thing that you have to do to just take the skin out. Look at that. And this is something very cool that I'm seeing now for the first time because this shell is actually green. Wow, what a cool color. Very, very nice, very classical. I'm, I'm not, not sure why they made it green. Normally it would be black or white or something. I guess maybe they had just had some spare color available when they made this production. I don't know if anybody knows this, it's very cool. You do see that this is just the classical M12 shell. You see this? So you see this here at, in the line here, you see the line here, so it's exactly the same shell. But they didn't do the, the lace rings. It's actually possible to put in the lace rings. I'm gonna make a tutorial about this later. Um, and they shaved off here this little edge because otherwise the skin will uh, get damaged. So it's the earlier Valo models didn't have this, so they added this later, I don't know when, 2015 or something. Um, it's a shame that they did it because you can actually use this shell if you just put an, an um, M12 sole plate on it and skate it as an M12. Because you can just put the buckle back on now, like this, screw it on, put this one back in, boom, put the laces in and then you have a skate. So actually you have two skates in one. If you destroy the skin, then you can just skate it as an M12. Bam. There's a lot of old Valo skates. Again, I'll keep, I'll keep talking about Valo because it's, it's just such a big part of the history of this skate. Um, so if you, if you wanna change the skins, uh, if, you, if you meet any old aggressive skater, they probably had Valo at some point and probably have an old skin for you to swap. So you can play around with these skins they never have been available as an aftermarket that much. They, they have it a little bit. So sometimes we have had them in our shop here. Um, I think we still have like one available right now in like a really big size or something. Um, and maybe we'll have them again in the future. But for now, don't expect a big aftermarket for these skins at this moment. There have been some people though who made their own custom skins. So if you just take this skin and you and just uh, make all the threads loose and you like you open it and you, you can redraw all the patterns so, and then you can make your own fabric and sew it back together with your own style. So that's kind of like a cool thing um, that many people have tried as well. The downside of these skins is that although if I'm holding it like this, it's not very heavy it does add weight. So that's kind of like one of the downsides of this skate in general, I think, if there's any, because I love this skate, okay? So, but if I have to say one of the downsides is, it's definitely more heavy than it's necessary, okay? So because of the skin and everything. Next topic, let's talk about the liner. Uh, this is just a standard classical Roaches liner. It's been the same for about 20 years, I think. Um, and it's the same one that's used in the Roaches Steam Skates and the Roaches M12 Pro Skates. Uh, the fifth element has a little bit thicker version of this. Um, and the Roaches M12 UFS Recycle has a little bit slimmer version of it. 
So if you put in the fifth element liner in this case, you'll have a little bit less room. And if you put in the UFS recycle liner, you'll have a little bit more room. The liner will break in. Uh, so if you put on the skates for the first time, it will feel a lot more cramped than later. It will become looser and looser. All right, next topic is the buckle. I already showed you how to remove it. Um, funny thing is that this is a memory buckle. So you can uh, adjust it once and then it just clicks in at the same position forever. And not a lot of people know this actually because it's really clear here for this skate that it has a button and you can clearly see it and you can open it. So people are likely to figure out how the memory buckle works with the, the Roach M12. But with the Dogma skates, the button is hidden. So you actually have to kind of like search for it. I know where it is, it's right here. And then you can, you can uh, put it in and, and make it smaller or, or, or bigger. So it's good to know that this is here. This is one of the best buckles on the market. It also lasts long. Uh, we have it as the aftermarket, so you can just buy it on thisisol.com if you want to change colors. These one come, come in gold, oh. but we also have it in, um, in black and in silver on our website. Mm -hmm. It is also possible to put this buckle on a normal skate, and normal skate I mean like a skate with the standard buckle mount, SBM3. Check out our video about buckles if you want to learn more about this standard, and also how to put this buckle on another SBM3 type skate. Next topic is the flex. Um, you see here that there's a rivet and you can just actually move the cuff forward and backwards like this, okay? Um, this is uh, very normal, but of course you cannot really see that this is the case because it's underneath the skin. So it's a good thing that I can show it to you like this. Um, the, the forward flex is really natural of this skate. It's kind of like how it, how it should be, in my opinion. And the backwards flex is, uh, is quite funny because a lot of skates, they kind of like have um, a fix for the backwards flex by making a V-cut. So to increase the backwards flex and make it more natural with that. But this one, if you pull it to the back, um, it kind of like has um, exponential resistance. So if I pull twice as hard, I can still pull it a little bit more to the back. And then if I pull three times as hard, I can still move it a little bit more. So that makes it that the flex is really natural. So there's no artificial stop to it. If you take any other skate, let's take this Mesmer skate here, for, uh, for example. It has uh, a stop here. So if you, if you put it to the back, it will just hit the shell and then there's a, a V-cut option for this skate to compensate for that. So that's about the forward and backwards flex. It's really natural. And uh, the sideways flex is perfect for aggressive skating. I think if you have small wheels and you want to um, do royales and stuff, I don't think that this is a, a good skate to put bigger wheels on because for that, the sideways flex is a little bit too much. So if you want to have this skate with like a three times 110 option or a, a, a four times 100 with the rocker or any like anything bigger than, uh, than 76 or 80 millimeter would be too big. That was everything about the flex of the skate. Now let's talk about the cuff. Here you can see the cuff. It's the part that moves forward and backwards. Uh, it's non-removable, so you cannot unscrew it. Um, there is a way, of course, to take it off. I've done this many times with this skate. You can just put a drill in it on the inside and then put a, a cuff bolt in it. We sell those cuff bolts, of course, on thisisol.com. Um, for the Dogma skate, there's really no reason to change the cuffs because normally uh, you would do it to get a different style, like a different something that's maybe a little bit higher or lower or maybe something that has a little bit different flex. Or you would do it because of a different color, but for the, the Dogma skates, of course. You don't see it, so there's no reason. I would just keep the original cuff. It works great. It has a nice protector here for the buckle, and uh, it also works best with this memory buckle type. That's it for the cuff. Next topic is the sole plate. Uh, you can see it here. Of course, now I have the frame on it, but you can just take the frame off. It's a two-piece sole plate. This, so this part is a different part. You see here, I can just take it off um, separately. Um, 
Why it's a two-piece sole plate, I don't really know for sure. They could have made it a one-piece sole plate. I think that would be a little bit better even. Funny thing is that there's also another sole plate that has the same fit, but they discontinued it. This was kind of like the replacement for it. I don't know what year it was. I think it's like, a, if I have to guess, it's like 2014, 13 or 14 or something like that era. Um, they made a three-piece sole plate back then. It had these little inserts. It kind of looked, looked cool as well. Um, but it functioned exactly the same, I think, than, uh, than this one. Um, and um, again, it's the same sole plate that's used on the fifth element. And there's, as far as I know, no other sole plate that really fits on this skate. So if you want to replace it, don't because it's a really good sole plate. It fits perfectly uh, around the Dogma skate. So if you want to get a new sole plate, just buy the, the original one. We have it, of course, here in our shop. The width is really nice and the backslide groove position is also really nice. Next topic is the frame. It's the standard Roaches frame. Um, it's been produced for, uh, for many years already. It comes under all Roaches skate. And it's just a, a great frame. I think this is one of the most underrated frames on the market, actually. You don't see a lot of people like choosing this frame conscious, consciously, like that they also have it underneath other skates, for example. But uh, I think they should, because it's a really good, strong, solid frame. It lasts a long time, because it's really thick. Um, the groove is kind of like in between a little bit, between a flat and an anti-rocker set up um, so you can skate this frame anti-rocker really good but you can also skate it flat pretty okay yeah? it's not the best flat setup for sure mm -hmm. the mounting to the boot is of course ufs all aggressive skates um, okay. except for the aeon have a ufs mount and uh, that means that you can put on any ufs frame on uh, on this boot and uh, you can put this frame also on any other UFS skate. Next topic is the, the wheels and the bearings. And I don't actually want to say too much about it because they are just fine, okay? Uh, the wheels that come underneath the fifth element and the Dogma skates are the better quality wheels that Roaches has. The, the, the gray type wheels uh, that come with the Roaches UFS recycle are definitely slower than the black and the white uh, ones that are 60 millimeter that come under the fifth element in the dogma. So the wheels are just great wheels. They're not the best wheels on the market, but that's also what you can expect from a skate. It always comes with just normal quality wheels. If you want to get the best wheels, you need to upgrade. So that's the next topic of this video is what kind of type of upgrades there are. Uh, I would say get some dead wheels. Those are really good, the dead brand. Gods, Undercover. Those are bands that are really good. If you take those, then you'll go a lot faster. Um, metal core wheels are super fast. So check those out, just try it once. The insole in the skate is fine if you just wanna, like if you, if you just wanna start skating and don't have any other uh, experience, but if you really wanna have top performance output in a super feet insole. A lot of people, after they buy a skate like this, uh, they upgrade the frame uh, because you really want to, to have a frame that's perfect for grinding and perfect for riding. This does not exist, but it's an eternal quest, okay? I think the Wish frame is the one that's, uh, that comes closest. You write it O-Y-S-E. Um, that's the perfect mix, I think, between riding and grinding as far as possible. But it's a kind of like an eternal quest. Uh, so you can definitely upgrade the frame. Uh, another upgrade or uh, customization you can do, of course, is the toe cut. Just uh, take off this part and you have a, lot of, uh, a little bit more room with your toes. And you can also always put on an M12 sole plate once the skin is done. It is actually possible to just take the skin off and just mount the boot directly on the, the sole plate like this. But I do have to say that I don't think that this is a very aesthetically pleasing thing because you have this big split here. It would save some weight, but you definitely get less style points, I think. Yeah, as well. Yeah. These are all the things that I can think of regarding this skate. If you have some thoughts about it that I missed, drop it in the comments. 
If you like videos like this, we'll make a new one every week. We have a YouTube channel with playlists full of hardware reviews, hardware insights and industry insights, but also skating lessons. So check out our channel, subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.